In this video, I'll show how to automate data entry on a browser using the data in a Microsoft Excel file. This is a demo form I made with JotForm to demonstrate the automated data entry. I will use a free extension for Google Chrome. The extension works on the Microsoft Edge browser as well. Here are the data that I am going to enter into the form one by one. Each row contains data for a patient. These are all demo data to demonstrate the process. Let's check the form and the types of the field we have. Here we have the name with three different fields, first name, middle name and the last name. We have a date of birth field and a gender field that only accepts radio inputs, either male or female. Here we have phone number, email and all these are normal text inputs. Here we have a drop down selector. I created the form with all types of fields so you can see how the extension works with different types of fields. Let's start. First, download the extension Excellent Data Filler from the Chrome Web Store. You will find the link to the extension in the description of the video. I already have the extension installed. After installing the extension, open the web page where you need to enter the data to the form. This is a one page form but I will also guide you when your form contains multiple pages where you need to click on a button to go to the next section of the form. Stay with me until the end of the video. Now, here, right click on the form and under Excellent Data Filler, select this Insert Site option. It opens a new tab and creates a new site. Now I'll click on this Edit Site button. Here I can change the title and I can change the description. This is the URL of the page. I'll click on this button to edit the form fields data. These are all the fields it found on the form. I'll check if all the fields are correct. I can see it created three extra fields for the date of birth field, although it has a date of birth field separately. I do not need these three fields, so I'll disable these three fields here. This month, day, and year. It detected the radio input automatically. If I click on this edit field button, I can see the field type is radio. Now I'll scroll down to check the other fields. I can see it created a postal or zip code field for the address but I do not have a zip code field on my form. So I'll disable this field here. When I scroll down, I can see it detected the drop down selector automatically. I'll click on this edit field button and I can see the field type is select. At the bottom, it created a website field, but on my form, I do not have a website field. So I'll disable this field. Now I'll update the changes with the button at the top. Now we need to upload the data we have in the Excel file. So I'll go back. Here I'll select the Upload Excel tab. It created a template as I edited the fields. We need to use the template so it can match the data according to the fields. Now I'll click on this Download Excel Template button. I'll open the downloaded template. Here's the template. I'll click on this Enable Editing. Don't worry about the headers here. It created the headers the way it read from the form. Here is our data. I'll copy all the data and I'll paste all the data to the template. After copying the data, make sure it matches the columns. If your data do not match the columns, you need to find the field causing the mismatch. If your template has extra columns, you can edit the field and you need to download the template again. I'll save this template. Now I'll upload the Excel file. Here I'll click on choose file. I'll select the downloaded template where I copied the data and I'll click on the update button. So it saves the data. This is the time to test. We haven't configured the action for the submit button yet. First, we will test it to see if it fills the data correctly. To run the automation, I need to reload this page. You can see after reloading, it started filling the data. And here I can see it entered the data correctly in the correct fields. The test is successful. Now we need to work on the form submission. For that, I'll click on this first tab, Site Form Pages. Here I'll click on the Edit Field option. You see the plus button here? Insert a new field, I'll click on that. In the Field Name text box, I'll type a curly brackets. It shows all the available form inputs. I'll select the Form Field option and I'll save this. Down below, I can see the newly created field, Form Field. Now I need to configure the action on this field. I'll go to the form. Here, I'll right click on the submit button. Under excellent data filler, 
I'll select copy element xpath selector address. I click on allow. I'll paste the xpath I just copied from the button. And here I need to set it to xpath. Now we need to define what it will do after submitting one row. We need to run the process in a loop so it fills all the data available in the excel file. Here you see the success button, I'll click on the success button. It automatically grabs the form page URL as the success page URL. But we do not know what the success page URL yet. To check the success page URL, I'll submit the data that was already filled by the extension. Here I can see the success page URL. I'll copy the URL and I'll paste it here. Although in my case, the success page URL is same as the form URL. Under match URL types, it has multiple options. If the success URL changes for the each submissions, in that case, you can select match URL with hostname. So it checks only the domain as the success page URL. Depending on the environment you are working on, you need to fine tune this setting here. For me, I'll keep the full URL. Now I need to match the success message. Here it has multiple options. You need to select the one depending on the form you are working on. Some forms shows pop-ups after submissions. In that case, you can select checking element exists on page. My form shows a success message. So here I'll select matching message in page. To match the message, I'll select the expert option here and I need to copy the expert of the message. So I'll right click on the message here under excellent data filler. I'll copy the expert of this and I'll paste it here. So this is the expert of this message. Now I need to tell it what is the success message so it can match it. I'll copy the message here and I'll paste it. Under the action, we need to define what it does after one submission. I'll select redirect to page and it should go to the form URL. So I'll copy the URL of the form and I'll paste it here. Now it will loop through all the data. Here it has an option if you want to set a delay between the submissions. You can leave it blank. I'll update all the settings here. The extension has an option if you want to see the progress while it is working. For that, click on the settings at the top and under the form filler settings, enable this if you want to see entry status bar, then turn it on. I'll click on this update settings button. We are done with all the settings. Let's run it. I'll go to the form page. It starts automatically whenever it finds the URL. Below you can see the status. If for some reason it couldn't enter a data, you can click on the next button here and it will start for the next row and you will find all the statuses of the entries in the extension. I'll click on the next button for this. Here I'll click on this next button. I'm clicking on the next button so I can show you the status for these entries. To pause the automated data entry, you need to open a new tab and when you return to this tab, it will continue entering the data. To stop the entry, click on this activate or deactivate toggle here, it will stop the process. To check the status of the entries, click on this Excel data tab here and here you can see the statuses. Under this success column, you can see the status. I have clicked on the next button for these three rows so it shows the status manually next. When the toggle is on, it marked it done. Next time, it will skip this marked rows so you will not have duplicate entries. I manually clicked on the next button for this row, this row and this row. I have turned off the toggles for these three rows so it enters the data when I run the automation next time. If you want to skip any of the row, you can just turn the toggle on and it will not enter the data for that row. One more settings you need to do here. Under the settings tab, you have an option when Excel data not found or all rows has been marked as field stop form filler. This option will stop the process when it finds blank rows. Let's go to the fields tab again. Here under this edit form fields data, you can manually organize the order of the fields. When your form contains multiple pages, you need to add manual form field buttons like we did before. Don't forget to check out this video on how to scrap website data with a free tool without any coding knowledge. Please hit the like button if you find the video helpful and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.